In this video, we're going to discuss a plethora of ideas, not the least of which is how to style the background of our application using an image, which I promised you I would talk about but never really did, to give it a unique look and to kind of avoid this black background for every application that we write. Uh, also want to talk about responding to orientation changes up to this point whenever the emulator, if it were to turn on its side, it, nothing would happen. It would be locked in place. What if we want to allow there to be more vertical space whenever you know the the user reorients the phone I'm going to show you how to make that it's a really quick change however once we make that change we're going to have to account for that within the layout of our application so I want to discuss that briefly as well I'm going to look at the rectangle object only as a way of adding some background opacity behind other controls it'll especially come in handy when we have a real colorful picture and we want some text to pop out on that picture uh, we can put a rectangle, set its opacity, then put the text block on top of it. I'll show you how, how to do that. And then I'm going to also demonstrate how to flip between a read mode and an edit mode. So you have a text block and a text box and how to hide one and show the other whenever we go into like an edit mode. Okay. Uh, again, very simple ideas, but I just wanted to combine them all together and use some of them then on the exercise on day three in the next video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. You can see in Visual Studio, I have a project called Orientation and Background. So the first thing that I wanna demonstrate here is that whenever we were to just run this app and we open up our emulator, if I were to choose the rotation button, notice that now nothing really rotates. It's kind of locked in place here. And if we were to have any of our own controls, they would be locked in place as well. So how can we fix that? Uh, the way that we can do that is just a simple property on the phone application page. Look at this property called supported orientations. If we were to look at it here at the very bottom of the properties window, there's the choice between portrait or landscape or portrait or landscape, which is what we want. So it'll work in either scenario. So I'm just going to make that one simple change, makes the change in the XAML. I'm going to rerun the application now. And then when we flip the emulator on its side, notice that the text blocks, the default text blocks, change orientation. The same would be true for the other controls that we have as well. So that has some implications that we'll get back to in just a moment. The next thing that I wanted to demonstrate was how to set the background of our application because up to this point we've only been using black backgrounds, just the default color. Uh, we could certainly modify the color itself, but if we wanted to use an image like some applications do that have just a nice neat uh, gradient or some sort of fancy picture background, we can do that easily. I put my mouse cursor in the layout root grid and I'm going to go to the background property currently set to transparent. I'm going to drop it down and then we've seen this before earlier, right? Earlier in the day. So now I'm just going to go to the uh, to the picture brush and select an image from the pictures that I have on my Windows 7 operating system. I'm going to choose the desert and click open and then select OK. And now notice automatically we get a very Bing-like user interface. Hey, we can steal a page from their book, right? Use some beautiful uh, nature scene to as the backdrop for our application is probably better than most developers can come up with on their own, quite, quite honestly, at least better than what I can come up with. Maybe you can do better than I can. Uh, so now let's see what happens when we run our application. We haven't done much yet, admittedly. Hey, that looks great. What if we turn it on its side? Ah. It reorients itself as well. Very nice. Now, we may have to play around with, you can see there's some stretching of that image. We might have to play around with that uh, and um, see if we can't maybe choose a better image that size correctly for uh, that would work well or maybe change the stretching property here to uniform to fill. That's probably what we need to do. Let's try the uniform to fill here and see if we get better results. All right, so that looks good, and then that looks good. No stretching. So that's what we need to do from this point on. Excellent. Okay, so now let's just do this real quick. I'm going to take a uh, text block, and I'm going to put it on my image here. And I'm going to stretch it out to kind of fill up this whole area here. Now, do you see the problem that I'm seeing? 
there's not a lot of contrast between this very light blue color and my white text. That's kind of a problem. And I guess I could fix it by changing the text color, but what if I have an application that has multiple backgrounds that the user can select? Maybe we can get a compromise by using a different control in our toolbox. Something that I see that I, I enjoy using is the uh, rectangle object. I'm just going to drag and drop the rectangle here. I'm going to put it like right by the text block. In fact, I might even get in and edit the XAML and cut it and paste it above it so that, you know, we talked about Z order and how close things are and the further down they are in the XAML, the closer they are to the user. So I want the rectangle behind the text block but in front of the image itself. Then what I want to do with the rectangle is to modify its opacity. So what I'll do is just choose the alpha channel here to kind of give it a darker background. You can see by doing that, some of the image still peeks through. However, my text blocks text is now more, it has a better contrast so that the user can, can see what the text is actually, what actually says. So I like that approach. I'm gonna save that. And I'm gonna run the application now and see what we need to do to make this work now you see where the problem lies here. My rectangle as well as my text block, they do not stretch to the entire, uh, the entire width of my phone when it's in landscape view. So let's look at what we have to do to get that to work correctly. Here, I'm gonna make some room for myself. What we need to do is simply this. I'm going to make sure that the horizontal alignment is set to stretch for both of these. The next thing I'm going to do is remove that left margin setting. And then finally, I think what I'm going to do is just remove the width altogether for both. Now, if I were to rerun this application by making those changes, you can see that my rectangle, and although we can't see it here, the text block will adhere to this as well, that it takes up the entire width regardless of whether I am in this orientation or that orientation. Perfect. All right. Excellent. So let's move on now. One other concept I wanted to show you was a little trick. Uh, if you want to allow somebody to edit the values that are at this point read only and you want to flip this text block into a text box, what I'm going to do is drag and drop a text box onto the designer and I'm going to get into the XAML because I feel more comfortable there at this point. I'm going to set the text boxes properties equal to the text blocks properties so that they are perfect so that the text box perfectly overlaps the text block I'm going to remove the width And I guess what I'll also do here is I'm going to remove the text in both of these. Or I guess I can do this. Let's just type in hello world. I got an idea. I got an idea of what we can do here. All right, we're going to need one more control then. We're going to need a button. So let me just type that in. And I'm going to set the horizontal alignment to stretch as well. I don't want it to stretch the entire width, but we can, we can modify that. I'm going to set its width to 250. And then I'm going to give it a click event. 
That should just about do it. All right, so you see our beautiful new edit button there. Great, let me double click that. And so then inside here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna do that swap. So when somebody clicks the edit button, it's gonna flip from the, uh, from the text block to the text box, and then when they click it a second time, it'll flip it around the other way. So first thing I wanna do is check to see which one is currently visible. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the tack that I'm taking. I'm gonna check the visibility of the text box. If the text box is visible, then I'm gonna execute, execute this code. If it's not visible, I'll execute this code. So I'm toggling between the visibility of the text box and the text block. So when somebody clicks on the edit button, my button click, then I want to retrieve the values from the text box and put them back into the text block and then set the visibility appropriately or vice versa. So to see this in action, I need to do actually one more little modification here. I'm gonna to need to set the visibility of both of these, the initial visibility equal to, I want the text block visible and I want the text box collapse to begin out, to begin with. Okay, so now let's see this in action. Hopefully this is gonna work. All right, so you can see here we have hello world. When I click edit, it hides the text block, opens up the text box, puts the value in there for me to edit, and I can continue editing. And then when I click the save button, it will then collapse the text box, take the value of the text box and put it back in the text block. Okay, and just to kind of validate that this all works regardless of what you know orientation I have, it seems to work. All right, so that's all I really wanted to cover in this video, just talk about several different things. The styling of the background with an image, the responding to the changes in orientation and how that affects our controls and what we need to do, you know, removing the width property, being mindful of the margin on the left-hand side, uh, changing the horizontal uh, orientation or the alignment rather to stretch and things like that to make this work correctly and I need to test it to make sure it always looks good no matter what. Talked about uh, using the rectangle control and setting the opacity and then putting controls on top of it to increase the uh, readability of the text in our application if we're going to have a multicolored background and then also how to do that flip between the text box and the text block to kind of go from edit mode to read only mode. All right, so hopefully that was helpful. A lot of different ideas there. Went through them very quickly. But now we've come to the end of day three. Now we're ready for the homework assignment. Hope you're ready. Don't cheat yourself. Do it. Force yourself to even if you have to struggle to do it. It's valuable exercise. All right, so we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you.